community organizer, civil rights activist, devoted wife and mother, teacher, elected official, leader in the arenas of elementary, secondary, and higher education. These are the roles Maxine Smith has filled throughout a lifetime of hard work, scholarship, service, determined and courageous leadership, and personal achievement. Her work to break down barriers for African Americans is well known. In 1957, just six months after Smith gave birth to her first and only child, a friend convinced her to enroll with her in graduate school at then Memphis State University, now the University of Memphis. When they were denied admission, the Memphis branch of the NAACP took notice. That began a relationship between Maxine Smith and the NAACP that now spans more than 40 years. The president of Memphis State had publicly stated his opposition to the integration of the campus. Smith and her friend Lori Sugarman were unsuccessful in their attempt to break the color barrier at the university, but their anger and disappointment fueled a movement that was taken up by the Memphis NAACP chapter. Maxine Smith became membership chairman of the Memphis NAACP in 1957. After two years of hard work, Smith was successful in organizing a group of students in 1959 that became known as the Memphis State Eight, the first black students to be admitted to the university. That campaign helped pave the way for other efforts to integrate Memphis and the Mid-South. In 1962, in recognition of her leadership and commitment to civil rights, Smith was named Executive Secretary of the Memphis NAACP. Over the next several years, she organized a series of sit-ins and boycotts with the goal of desegregating everything from schools and libraries to lunch counters and theater seating. In 60, Memphis was completely segregated, completely segregated. It was a time of turmoil and strife in the South. Smith took up the cause of the sanitation workers in Memphis and was herself arrested during sit-ins. Her experiences during the civil rights struggles of the 1960s made her an unwavering advocate for fairness and equal opportunity for all people. That role fit well with her love for the field of education. She started her career as a teacher at the university level after receiving her master's degree in French at Middlebury College in Vermont. This included a stint at Lemoyne-Owen College. In 1969, she coordinated the boycotts that eventually led to the appointment of the first African-American superintendent of the Memphis City Schools, Dr. W. W. Harrington. The boycotts, which became known as Black Mondays, were a massive undertaking. During a series of Mondays that fall, more than 60,000 black students stayed home from school, and the Board of Education was picketed. Under the threat of losing federal funding due to absenteeism, the school board agreed to the NAACP's demands. In 1971, despite health problems, Smith ran successfully for a post on the Memphis Board of Education, a position she held for 24 years. Again, her resolve to end discrimination in public office was shown repeatedly as she fought to integrate the administration of the Memphis public school system. It took us two decades after seeking representation of blacks at the uh, administrative and policy-making levels in the school system, and that went from petitions to boycotts. And we're ready to uh, go as far as we have to go. During her years on the Memphis Board of Education, she fought to make sure all students had equal opportunities and equal facilities, regardless of color. She also focused on ensuring minority participation in school system contracts. Our overriding concern is that it's done fairly and with as much inclusion as is possible. Her work on the school board established her reputation as an educator, which was recognized by Governor Ned McWhorter in 1994. He appointed her to the Tennessee Board of Regents, the governing body for most of the state's institutions of higher education. At the time, only the two predominantly black schools in the Board of Regents system had African-American presidents. During Smith's 12-year tenure, six black presidents were appointed to predominantly white Board of Regents schools. She received high marks from her peers on the board for teaching them important lessons about balancing the quality of presidential candidates with the need for racial diversity. From being denied admission to Memphis State University, 
to having a major college complex named after her. Maxine Smith has overcome adversity to create a lasting legacy for students and educators today. I hope I've left a strong desire in my teaching years, in my years on boards, and in my years of service with the NAACP to make this a burning in the heart of all students who are embraced by our total communities and organizations that have fought for our perfection, uh, as near perfection as you can get in our learning skills, and therefore a better life for our cities, our counties, our states, and our nation.